description below to my Instagram for a bronze joker. Hey, what's up you guys? Shard Mr. Prime here doing another McFarlane Toys action figure review on the DC Multiverse Batman Arkham Origins Deathstroke. Try and get your DC Multiverse figures, you can do so at Such your feelings, you know it to be true. Dorkside Toys is a store for you! Link below. And while you're down there, please go ahead and hit that like button and hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. We need the one million subscribers. And a big thank you to McFarland Toys for sending out this product sample to review for you guys. Want to see the latest in McFarland Toys? Check them out. Link in the description below. And this looks pretty sick already. I'm excited. On the side, it says Deathstroke Batman Arkham Origins. You get the Batman Arkham Origins spot varnish right over there. And then on the back, you can see a nice image of the character. Here's some comic cover images. And then on the side, it says Deathstroke. And the window creeps up to the top. Not much more at the bottom, so let's get to it and crack this thing open. <laughs> So we get three accessories over here. We get the trading card, your standard issue DC stand, and then you get the sword right over here. And unfortunately, this is it. Just these, well, you do get a coffee stain, but I wish we did get more accessories. Uh, on the back right over here, there's a read-up on Deathstroke. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it right now. And then you can see the sword right over here, you know, painted with this nice gunmetal gray for the blade. And then you get the black handle right down there. So that looks pretty cool. I just wish that he came with more accessories, and I am a little bummed out about the weapon storage for this uh, this sheath system over here is just really bent and I tried heating it up and straightening it out and it just ports into the back of the figure right here and it's just a little bit weird you just want to weave this through right there and you can just take it off and then just play match the shape for the blade right there so you know this is kind of how I've been putting this in here and then just weave it right back through there but when you do that it's gonna warp the shape and everything and uh, that looks just a little bit ugly so for the most part I have him holding the sword instead of actually having it stored. The like for a rhyming Shardmas, my new hip-hop name Shardmas Rhymes. <laughs> So at first, I wasn't the biggest fan of this metallic orange color on the figure. I thought it wasn't saturated enough, but after taking numerous photos of the figure, I'm pretty happy with it. I actually really like how it looks a lot, man. That is very cool. Nice clean paint apps for the flesh tone in the eye right there. The texturing on this side of the mask looks great. I love this added detail right here of some scarring going on. So that's really neat, or battle damage, I guess. It's not a scar if it's your clothes, right, or if it's your mask, but... But yeah, you can see some more damage and everything on the side right there. That looks great with the sculpted detail, man. And then there's a little whole uh, bandana tassel thingy right there on the back of the figure. Did want to show a comparison next to the DC Collectibles Arkham Asylum Deathstroke. So you can see those two side by side. So there you go, and I am really liking the detail that we're seeing on this, especially with this whole Kevlar texturing thing going on that we see throughout. That looks cool. I like the straps right here. That's awesome. Looking at the shoulders and the forearms and everything. I love that they have the sculpted chain mail right there in the joints, so you could see that right there. Or even on the inside of it, you could really see it. So that's very cool. Loving the little, you know, battle damage again, man. And I love this metallic orange now. <laughs> At first, it really did throw me off, but yeah, I really do like it. It looks sick. Very, very cool. And I love how they were able to get that on those joints right over there. And it's fairly consistent throughout on the whole figure. Looking at the belt and everything, looks really good. Here's something that I really don't like. Ah, oh, we have a gun that is not removable from the holster. I hate that. Oh, I hate that so, so much. Big time bummer for me right there. But the legs look dope, and then you get a grenade on the side, there's the Deathstroke butt, you can see that sheath again right there for the sword, here's looking at the back of the legs. I did have to heat this up to get these knee joints really to work as well as I wanted them to. Uh, I'll go over the articulation more in just a second, but man, I just want to look at all these details because there's a lot of detailed sculpt in here, like even on the knee pad right there and everything. So, very much digging that, looking at the boots right there, they look cool, and on the bottom you can see some treads and peg holes. So I do have some gripes with the articulation but I mostly like it. The head could look up more, I think, or I wish it could look up more anyway. So that's not, uh, yeah, ideal, but it will look down very far. You get side-to-side -side motion over here. The collar does get in the way. You get a great amount of head pivoting right over here. You get the butterfly joints that move forward and back, and they also shift up and down, and you get this soft rubbery material for these shoulder pads, so you can get the shoulders moving all the way outward, which is great. I really like that a lot, so that's very cool. You can move them in very far. You could rotate a full three 
360, you get a bicep swivel where you can see the shoulder pad is attached. So that's neat. You get double jointed elbows, then the wrist turns side to side and hinge horizontally or up and down, depending on how you have it configured. There is no mid torso articulation at all. We just get a waist cut over here. So you can turn the waist side to side. You could pivot right over here and it'll move forward and it's made out of a fairly soft material move forward that much and back that much i do wish there was more articulation in the torso but you know there's a lot going on with that waist joint hips move outward that far and you can get them kicking forward that much and back all the way no upper thigh cut you just get a little bit of wiggling i really wish they can add a cut to the upper thigh and then you get these fairly stiff double jointed knees i did have to heat this up especially to get that top knee joint to really move and right now it's kind of stuck on me so that is a frustration but that second knee just moves a whole ton easier the ankles move down you can move them up you can turn them side to side and he has ankle pivot and toe articulation now to measure out this death stroke figure you can see that it is standing just a bit over the seven inch mark a little bit closer to seven and a half inches actually and then for an arkham origins death stroke comparison we have the mcfarland toys version and the dc collectibles version that came out many years ago and these are both arkham origins versions right i don't think we had one in arkham asylum or another game but i think they're from the same game and and I do really like the details that we're getting right here on this figure, a lot more so than with this one. While I did like the battle damage, eh, just over time, it just looks like a lot of the veins and stuff like that. So getting actual sculpted battle damage right over here with this one, I do prefer that more. There's some things going on with the articulation with this one. I kind of wish this one had, but overall, this is still the easier figure to work with. Uh, the biggest thing that this one has over this one is the accessories. I mean, he has, he's properly loaded. He's got the sword the staff the gun this one just has the sword and that fake gun which i hate it when companies do that <sighs> then for another death stroke comparison we have the dcuc mattel death stroke from the comics right over here this one has the two guns the staff and the sword so yeah again for me with my experiences buying death stroke figures and i'm not showing off the amazing Yamaguchi one but that one came with a ton of accessories it's an import you know what i'm saying but anyway i wish he still had more than just the one weapon then here's the arkham origins death stroke next to the arkham asylum batman i do have the arkham origins batman that i'll be reviewing later on but i got gotta say i really like the height difference between these two even though they're from two different games i mean really i'm happy to see that mcfarland toys is getting better with the scaling so this looks dope even though i wish batman was just you know maybe a hair taller but again different games later on we'll see how the arkham origins batman looks like next to that one and then here's the arkham origins death stroke next to your average six inch scale figure we have the marvel legends big time badass spider-man death stroke huh it's a little pornographic Something with that BDSM mask you have over there. You, you DC people are getting nasty. I'm out of here. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please show some love and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And a big thanks to all these people over here that are showing extra love supporting via crowdfunding. If you're interested in helping this channel grow, check it out. Link in the description below. And this figure looks dope. I really like this a lot, man. The aesthetics are my favorite part. However, I am bummed out about the lack of accessories so there are things that do bum me out a little bit but it looks really freaking cool man i love the detailed sculpt and all the battle damage the paint apps look really good the articulation is okay not the greatest not the worst by any means at all so i was able to get the figure pose and most of the poses i wanted to get him into so i'm pretty content with that not stoked for it and not especially upset about that so i think overall it's a pretty decent figure man especially if you missed out on the dc collectibles one i don't know how much that's going for in the aftermarket but yeah if you want to catch up and get this figure right over here i highly recommend it and at the price point of around 20 bucks i'm going to give this deathstroke figure a sun rating of it's not too bad and i'd like to know what you guys think so please let me know in the comment section below if you want to see the latest in action figure news and a photo gallery of images from this review you can find it over at toynewseye.com and if you want to follow me on social media you can check me out on instagram twitter twitch and stardust and i will catch you guys later Peace. And, uh, posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures every day. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. It's okay. That's crispy. Hey, I'm sure of his Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.